Hey everyone, it's Angela with Mystic Moon bringing you guys a soul contract reading. So what that means is that anybody, and it could be a twin flame, a soulmate, or just whoever you feel a special deep connection with in this lifetime, this is going to be a little bit of a peak, not all of it, of the soul contract that may have been developed between the two of you before you came down here to planet Earth, you know? So if you believe in that sort of thing, this is just going to showcase the different energies, the way that you guys wanted to trigger each other in order to have the most accelerated growth on this planet, as well as just the energies between the two of you. I'm going to go be going through all kinds of different things. So it's going to be a longer read for those of you that do enjoy these longer readings. But for some of you that don't like the longer readings, you might want to watch it in a couple of parts or just skip this one. This, these types of readings are not meant to resonate with everyone. Um, so if you're finding that it's just not resonating with you right off the bat, that probably just means it's not for you. And that's totally fine. There could be some things that do resonate and others that don't. So just take the ones that do and get rid of the rest is what we always say. So anyways, we're just going to get started. I'm going to be using a bunch of different decks as usual, and I'm just going to be winging it. You know, I have a pretty much a good idea of what I want to bring out in this reading, but I don't have everything concrete. So you might kind of see me, you know, stumbling through what the hell I'm going to do next. So the very first thing that I know that I want to do is I want to take a look at a little bit of the contract in 11 cards okay i'm also going to be using um, a variety of other different decks like i said to just derive the, the most information that i can get on this connection so this deck right here is called dreams of gaia tarot it's by Ra raven felon i believe is what her name is and we are going to just take a look at things let's see and I'm, I'm not using reversals today at all just letting you guys know i do not feel the need to do that some decks are easier to shuffle than others and this is one of the harder decks to shuffle i don't know why all right let's get started okay so when it comes to this connection whoever's watching this video at this time what are the energies? What is what is the purpose? What is the what is the uh, the thing that binds this these two people, these souls together? Okay, so the very first card is telling us that you have come together with this person for good old fashioned wisdom. Okay. The two of you are meant to learn something on this journey, and this journey isn't meant to be illuminated the entire time we have this person who is cloaked in this robe and they have this lantern and it seems like it's nighttime or it's dark and they're just not sure you're not meant to know exactly like every step of this journey if you are on a journey or just this path or this connection but you are meant to learn something from it which is what spirit's saying right away and it's destined is what they're telling you so you either came together with this person and it seriously just felt like destiny to you it just like it was effortless it just happened by chance but not everybody i don't view destiny as just that chance it just means that you guys were destined to come together in this lifetime there is a purpose for you and this other person to come together there is some kind of purpose here we do have the two of pentacles energy. Now I'm just going to put it out there for some of you out there that are twin flames. Sometimes readers will read the two of pentacles as a twin flame card. And the reason why is because there's usually, usually an infinity symbol in the, that card. In this card, we don't have it, but I just always have to put it out there for people that watch a lot of twin flame readings. They might say, well, Angela didn't mention that that's a twin flame card. Well, I'm mentioning that just in case you want to take that as a special message. But the two of pentacles here means that there will be a period of time, especially in the 3D world, where you will feel out of sorts with this person. Things will feel unstable. You will feel unsure with this person, but you're meant to. You're meant to learn something through this instability. You're meant to learn something that is, it's kind of like you have to figure things out. You have to put the pieces of the puzzle together. You have to figure out what works and what doesn't work. Um, this could also mean 
because in uh, other tarot cards we have a juggler this can sometimes be represented by somebody that juggles you and somebody else. It may be that you're the other person in a connection as well. There could be a period of time where maybe the person that you have this connection with is in fact in another relationship. And so people have to really figure out what they're going to do in the material world in order to figure something out here. So there could be that element as well. Let's continue. This is my twin flame indicator besides the masculine and feminine card in this deck. This is two fiery twin women, two flames, twin flames. So I just said that this is a uh, connection here that may be twin flame. This could be a twin flame connection for the majority of you that are watching this video, but it doesn't mean that it has to be that way for everyone, okay? But again, there are two women on this card. So for some of you, not all, okay? But for some of you, it could be that this person or you, in fact, has another partner in your life when you are within this, somehow when you're in this connection here, either when you meet them or when you want to come back together with them, when they show back up in your life, whatever the situation is, we definitely have the element of duality here. But we also have the element of two people as in twins. So there is both of those energies coming through. But two of fire is very passionate. It's very much a card where we are thinking of something. We're thinking of doing something. We're planning something. So I'm getting that these two energies are really speaking of the plans. This is, this is like a blueprint. The plans that have been made in this connection. We laid this down before we got here. So it's, it, it was already like predisposition. No, I don't know if I said that right. Anyways, we have the, what is this? The seven of swords. <laughs> Gotta love the seven of swords. So the seven of swords is a card of, can be deception. It can sometimes mean sneaky behavior, people doing things. I really read this card though in this deck about, it's really about integrity. It's about somebody learning from their behavior. And so that's what I'm getting here. People are learning from their behavior, the things that they have done. So some time in this connection, somebody may have hurt someone else. They may have lied. They may have cheated. This just may be a part of the lessons. We're, we're meant to grow. We are meant to figure something out. I got one of the cats that are crying. Let me let them in. Really? Come on. But you have to be quiet. Sorry about that. So, yes. We're meant to learn something. As we can see this man here, it's like he is learning something. Wisdom, remember, we're here, we're connecting because we're trying to learn something. This is something about wisdom. So we're meant to learn through these hardships. We're meant to learn when it comes to this type of behavior, this type of pain that's associated. Now, this doesn't just mean that this is this person's behavior towards you. This could very well mean that you do something to this person. Maybe you lie to this person. You cheat on this person. You try to get away with something or you try to go into this sneakier type of behavior. And you're learning something about how to act with more integrity in this lifetime. Okay, so she's going to cry outside of the door or in the door. So I might as well put her out. Because now she is really being loud. Okay. So yeah. Get what I'm saying? There's some sort of element or some sort of lesson in regards to integrity here in the way that we're treating um, somebody or the way that they're treating us. Okay. Thoughts. I love this card because it does show a woman here. She's like, she's sitting there at that cauldron and whatever she's putting into that cauldron is what she is going to experience. So if her thoughts are negative and fear-based, she may be creating some kind of experience whatever she thinks about a situation is going to feel real for her and now i keep saying her because there's a woman on the card but this could be for both people this is also a card where we must utilize our logic we must utilize our lo logic in order to figure out what we're thinking what we're feeling navigating through this connection here so there is definitely it gives us a lot to ponder on this connection and whatever happens within this connection really gives a person the ability to go deeply within themselves and really really think but it also reminds them that whatever they are thinking whatever they are putting into this magic cauldron here if it's negative there you go if it's positive then there you go so it's just that reminder here 
it teaches people about the law of attraction and their thoughts and how they're manifesting their reality, how they're creating their reality. Okay, so let's go ahead and go for a seventh card. Yep, this, this connection here is meant to go in separation, meaning that you could have already separated with this person, you're about ready to separate with this person, but this is in this deck here, it's the Eight of Cups, just so you guys know, Eight of Cups, as we all, well, most of us know, that somebody walks away. Somebody decides that they're just done with something and they walk away from us. Do you see how this person is standing there and they have all their chakras aligned and they are feeling good, they have learned something, they have wisdom, they see and then they're ready to return. They are facing you now. They are ready for you. So that's just what I'm getting with this card here. This is about leaving and separation, but it's also about the return. It's about the return to somebody, okay? So that's very significant here. So whatever we have here as far as separation, you are meant to come back together with this person and at least you know come back together with them and have some sort of reconciliation at some point within this connection. So that's evident. Let's go ahead and get an eighth card. Heaven and Earth. I love this card. The Heaven and Earth card just means that you can literally experience heaven on earth if you so choose to do that. This is also about blending different um, frequencies and vibrations and dimensions. Okay, This is about being in the 3D, but while you're in the 3D, being able to access the fourth and fifth dimensions. So this is literally your... It's like your vibration and your connection, which is another reason why I'm definitely feeling more of a twin flame connection with this, is because we're meant to come to planet Earth in order to raise the vibration. And so I'm actually seeing that through this card, and that's one of the reasons that you came together with this individual was to create heaven on Earth. That's that's beautiful. Okay. This is the Four of Wands energy, another twin flame card. <laughs> So, but in this deck, it doesn't really show the 1111, but it is in fact, you know, an 1111 twin flame card. Um, this is about foundation. This is also about goals. So people, what I'm getting from this connection is that they both want the same thing. They both came here with the same goal in mind. And the same goal in mind was to have heaven on earth. And this just also means that if you feel with this connection that, you know, you had heaven in the beginning, you came together with this person, it was just like, oh my God, your world was turned upside down. You felt so heavenly. And then all of a sudden, the reality of 3D and fears and all this other crap and separation took you down and you were just feeling in the dumps. So you may not believe that you were ever going to have heaven that feeling again with this person but i'm getting through this card it's like it really is about where you're where you're focusing your intentions and then remember it's about our thoughts wherever we're putting our thoughts is what we're creating so it's really about i just see for this connection here that these people started off with a connection obviously destiny brought them together and then they separated. Somebody walked away from somebody. Somebody may have cheated or deceived this person or just done something. It, and that may not be the case for everybody, but it's almost like a quick, and the flash of the night, they were gone. That they literally ghosted you. They just kind of stepped away from your life and you never heard from them again. Maybe you did that to them as well. So there is some sort of element to where somebody just kind of snuck away in the middle of the night and then it's a mystery like where the hell this person has gone. Um, but we have that card of like things are unstable. We're trying to balance things. We're trying to figure things out. So I'm getting that in, like initially when these two people came together, they were not balanced. So they triggered one another in order to have this balancing. So that way they can balance these energies within themselves. So that way they can eventually return. And when they return, they are restored. They are much healthier. They are much well-rounded. They are much more grounded now. Both people want the same things. What I'm getting is that these two people on this path, they're both working towards the same goal and they don't even know it, okay? Now, one of the twin flames may understand that they're working towards this person because they know who this person is. Your twin flame may not realize or understand this connection yet. But what I'm getting is that they're working towards this connection, whether they... Whether they uh, like acknowledge you as the person for them or not because that recognition may come later so i'm hoping that that makes sense so i have one two three four five six seven eight nine i have two more cards no i don't wait sorry guys one two seven, eight, nine i have two more cards to do okay yes this is definitely about self 
love, self-healing. This is about going deeply within oneself. Self is, to me, it's, this is a journey where the two of you are probably in separation. You're in separation. There's a time where you guys will be alone and on your own. But this is for the two of you to learn something here. This is in order for the two of you to restore some sort of balance or healing within yourselves. And we have the Nine of Swords. That's a card of anxiety. This is also another card where it talks about being alone and being in a state of solitude. It's about nightmares. It's about sleepless nights. It's also about being haunted. It's about feeling shame. It's about feeling sadness and regret. Somebody may have done something and it has caused them or they, it's like either they did not feel bad at first and maybe this is something that comes back with a vengeance and they're really needing to examine themselves on this level when it comes to this pain or the pain that they've caused other people. So I'm just getting there's something that someone is doing in their behavior. They're not acting with an integrity and because of this, it's really causing them to have to change. But I do see this person does change just so you guys know. So if you guys are fearful that this person cannot change, I actually see that it's part of a contract that they will change and that they're meant to return to your life as soon as they do so if you're waiting for someone or you're really desiring this connection in this union right now what I'm getting is that you're fighting against the inevitable and the inevitable is that this person has to go on this journey of themselves in order to be restored so that they can they can return to you when they're whole and when I say whole I mean what does that really freaking mean whole I'm just saying they're more improved than they were before okay they've done the work they've done work they've improved themselves so I'm just getting that you're getting a better version of who they are and they're in your also a better version of who you are too which is also why they are returning I'm seeing that this these people have done the work okay they're starting to realize the power of their thoughts they realize this connection or at least one of them does immediately we have this destiny card this is destined it's destined events and it's also a reminder that destiny as in the universe spirit will help assist to bring this connection back together some sort of integrity issues lying perhaps sneaking away kind of just a quick abrupt break instability needing to find balance in the material world so i'm also getting for this connection to somebody may have felt like their finances or some kind of accomplishment was not um, completed and they needed to go on this journey in order to uh, gain something they needed to you know catch a big dream they needed to um, you know just really build themselves up in the material world and then um, the other person could have just really been lacking a lot of independence and a lot of uh, financial stability themselves and so this has also given that other person the opportunity to build themselves up as well but we're gaining much wisdom from this we're focused on our goal and four of wands just so you guys know and I didn't say what this was earlier it's about stability it's about a happy foundation so both people are working towards this and they might not know it at the same time or that they're working towards this connection together even though they're not together heaven on earth this is the whole reason we came together to create heaven on earth and within this connection but we must we must go through much suffering is what I'm getting with this one there's a lot of suffering here there's a lot of self-examination there's a lot of pain and, so, and, and it might even be torment for some people, but this is meant to be this painful and this powerful in order for people to really, really change. So you might go through a dark night of the soul several times. Your person may need to go to a, through a dark night of the soul. And I'm just seeing that whatever happens, we have transformation. People are returning. They're coming back. They're feeling much better. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look. Um, these cards here are the Lightworkers Oracle by Alana Fairchild. And so let's just go ahead and see the reasons, um, you know, just kind of aside from the soul contract. Let's go ahead and see some of the reasons that we were meant to, to come to this planet and what we're meant to do within our connection. What are we meant to do with all this light? <laughs> Look at this dark angel. What did I say? Definitely something about a very challenging um, dark energy with that nine of swords that just came up. So what I'm getting here is that we have an angelic presence, okay? Like an earth angel presence. So it's like somebody within this union may be um, an, like an earth angel type, okay? A light worker themselves. They're meant to come here in order to help people with their darkness. But I'm also getting that this 
angelic assistance helps this other person who is in darkness to see the light they help them out of their darkness they might be their guiding light they might refer to them as their angel um, but I'm just getting that they might feel dark they might not feel um, they might not feel ready for this kind of energy when it comes to them. And so because of that, they're, they are having to go through their darkness in order to, you know, work out those shadowy aspects of themselves. But I'm also getting that this person that's so full of life when they come together in this connection may also go through a dark period of time. And um, I'm getting that unconditional love and forgiveness is the key to unlocking this dark angel. There's just something coming through like that. What else? Master healing. These people aren't fucking around. Master healing. I mean, this is healing on a major level. We have this man who is looking in this book. I mean, this could be an Akashic Records thing. I'm not sure what that card exactly is, but I'm just going with the message of master healing. I mean, this is to master healing in this lifetime. This might be one of the reasons why this connection is very, very heavy. That might be why the pain is so significant in this lifetime, because what it does is it really triggers people in the most significant way to heal anything that is like been left over from lifetime after lifetime. So these people are here to master, which tells me that these people may not want to come back to planet Earth again. Last one. Oh, beautiful. Yes, because they want to ascend. They want to go over this rainbow bridge. They want to ascend. They don't want to come back to earth. That's just what I'm getting here with this, okay? They don't want to come back. They don't feel the need to come back. I mean, earth is hard, you know? So it's like to them, it's like the hardest school. It's the most challenging school. It's the most challenging planet. Um, so what I'm getting here is that, that they're ready to ascend. Once they clear these energies here, they're ready to ascend and go over this rainbow bridge. That's what I'm getting here. Amazing. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at the romantic things. What did they want to experience romantically together? What did they want to experience on a romantic level? This is Doreen Virtue's Romance Angel deck. What did these people want to experience on a romantic level? <laughs> they brought their past life things in here i mean obviously if you're a twin flame you have many lifetimes together you have known each other before so what i'm getting here on a romantic level is that when they came together within that first kiss or just in a romantic way an intimate way it was very evident that these people have known each other before because there was something significant about that it may have happened to just one person at the time or maybe it happened simultaneously and people were trying to figure out what the hell just happened what was that kind of thing you know so there's definitely this energy. But what I'm also getting to is that we have brought our past with us. We have brought some kind of past life issues with us into our love life. And so what I'm getting here is that when these two people came together, as attracted as they may have been to one another, and as good as they initially felt upon coming together and meeting, I'm getting that there was issues probably pretty quick off the bat because these things started to be activated and started to be triggered immediately and so what and, and i'm getting it's not only from past lives i'm getting the previous relationships that they have had in this lifetime started to affect them immediately right off the bat when it came to this connection but it was meant to because we're tr being triggered in this way so that way we can clear this crap so whether or not they did anything positive at that time or not, I'm just getting that it was triggered within them because of their past relationships with other people and any kind of past life that they've had with each other. Getting, yeah, getting to know each other. What I am getting here is that the, I'm getting a few things. You either did not get to know this person. Um, you, you like, you didn't have the opportunity to get to know this person for, 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 for like a while meaning that this is a short-term relationship you may have literally met this person and within one to whatever you know one to six months it was over maybe it was just a few days for some of you. i don't know but what i'm getting from this is that you really didn't even get a chance to get to know each other it was literally cut off but i'm also getting within the short period of time that you came together with this person you guys revealed some things to each other 
they revealed things to you that were dark the, you revealed things to them that may have been dark or just very precious to you because you felt a connection. You felt like you could open up to this person. But for some of you, I'm getting that that was part of the trigger. Whatever you shared with them or whatever they shared with you, they may have gotten afraid that they were just a little too authentic and transparent and they just didn't like that. They didn't want somebody to look, look at them in that light. They wanted to go on into another connection possibly to where they can be not themselves and just kind of show people who they thought they wanted them to see. I'm not sure, but there's some kind of energy here where we were robbed of the opportunity to get to know this person on an even deeper level, but we did reveal certain aspects of ourselves to each other. And because of this, this may be one of the reasons why we had some things come up that just, it just created the demise here engagement okay so for some of you what I'm getting is that maybe you even became engaged to this person maybe some of you even got married to this person that's for that's for just a select few of you out there watching this that could be what it is um, you know that you that's where it was going you wanted this you either had it or you wanted this you want this was your person you wanted this engagement you wanted this commitment you wanted to take your commitment to the next level somebody else didn't and again the reason why is because they may have been looking at your past or their past and thinking to themselves i'm going to cut this off before i reveal any more of myself to this person or i invest any more time with this connection i'm just getting that there's some kind of triggering that had happened here and it was from just some something that made people feel uncomfortable there was just something that they were running from and then finances and career comes up and so I did get this earlier in the contract where somebody with that two of Pentacles energy may have felt that they had something that they had to do in the financial material world they could have had some sort of you know just unresolved thing they were still searching for something they were still wanting that big piece of the Apple they wanted that money they wanted to create that you know fortune for themselves that recognition that fame whatever it is success it's like that could have been an issue but what I'm also getting for some of them too is that they may not have liked the financial position that you you were in meaning you either completely outshined them as in you made a lot of money and you were more successful that, than them and that made them feel very inferior towards you but for but for most of you when it comes to that message what I'm getting is that they may have really um, they may not have re either respected the work that you did or they just felt like they needed to be with somebody that had more money or that they needed to have somebody that was more successful that could basically um, you know either help them in some way or assist them in some way or somebody that they could have more of an equal partnership with like they may not have wanted to take care of you they may not have wanted to do that and I'm not getting that this person was a bad person for that I'm just getting that the person that was in this energy they needed to mature in this way okay they needed to mature and this for some reason could have been an issue for them this could also have been an issue for you too I mean we can turn the tables as well but I usually just read from the perspective of the person that I'm you know giving these messages to but that could have been your energy as well maybe the person was not stable stable or financially fit and so this is another thing where you're just like I'm just not sure if this is what I want I don't know if I want to take this to the next level and we have give your relationship a chance, work on your partnership. So what I'm getting here for this is that there are some of you that may have gone back and forth, back and forth, back and forth with this person. For some of you, that didn't happen. But for some of you, it did. Give your relationship a chance. You're working on your partnership. You could still be, you could be currently working on this partnership, which is why this is coming through too, okay? This is also Spirit's way of saying that you can work on this partnership. This partnership is not lost. This partnership is not, you know, it, it's not condemned. You can still, this relationship still has a chance. What I'm also getting is that for some of you that have not had that second chance, this may be because somebody does return and they want to give this relationship another chance. They want to work on this partnership. I did see a return of somebody after somebody leaves. They may come back and they may want to work on this partnership. That's just what I'm getting for the romantic energies with this connection. So let's go ahead and move on into some other messages here. Let's see how this person views you, okay? How they view you 
and basically what you trigger within them. This could be positive or challenging. So this, this one just popped up, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it. This person sees you as a gift, but the thing is, I know that some of you are saying, well, if they saw me as a gift, then why would they leave? Why would they treat me that way, okay? Not everybody has the tools at the time that they come together with these divine partnerships to know what the fuck to do. So what I'm getting here, this says the present. Now it could be talking about a gift or the present moment. This just means to me, and I'm gonna get a couple of messages here. This person did, as in past tense, saw you as a gift. But what I'm getting from this is that they might not have been able to see you in their life. Like they could not place you in their life for some reason. It could have been because of status. It could have been that because they were in on, like on a specific journey and somehow you just didn't fit the mold, okay? And as much as they did appreciate you and, and really did you know feel a connection with you and, and saw you as somebody that was somewhat of a gift to them, it's almost like they couldn't have you in their present life at the same time. I just have to give you guys what's being channeled. That's really deep. I don't know what that means for everybody, but I'm hoping that makes sense for somebody out there. What I am also getting from this person and how they view you is they are viewing you in the present moment now. So I was just talking about past as in if you're not with this person, I'm getting that right now they are starting to see the gift of this connection with you. They are starting to see you as a gift and I'm getting that they may want to come to you in this present moment. Like he, they're present, presently seeing you or feeling you or wanting to come back to you. That's just what I'm getting. So, and these two cards, or I'm not, two cards, three cards just popped out. So I'll take those because they're popping out. I was going to spread them out, but we'll just take these. This person sees you as falling in love. Wow. Okay. This, what I'm getting here, this is past tense and present. I'm getting at this person, they, they fell in love with you in their own way. Now, they may not have expressed that to you. They may not have expressed that to you at all. And maybe you felt like this person never loved me. I'm getting that in their own way, they did fall in love with you. And what the keywords are, knowing, I'm sorry, kissing the divine in another and then in yourself. That is a twin flame card more twin flame confirmations here falling in love this person may presently be falling in love with you so what i'm seeing here is that they may have had to come full circle with this connection with you they may be presently seeing you in a different light and now they are recognizing that there's this connection between the two of you that again never left them came full circle and so now they are kissing the divine in another and then in themselves this is like mirroring this is like both people feeling the same i mean it's a, it's a really really powerful card but what i'm also seeing here the magic of the colleen truth and i'm probably not saying that right caution secrecy and wary okay so as much as this person is presently seeing you and falling in love, and then of course in the past, you know, this is like they saw you as a gift and there's something that they fell in love with an aspect of you, but they may not have, maybe some of them did. Maybe some of them did share this with you, but their actions would have you thinking otherwise. Um, caution, secrecy, and wary. For some reason, the way that this person sees you or saw you, like I'm doing both for some reason. I'm being led to do that. They, it's like you, there was something about you that they kind of like, it, uh, there was a red flag for them. There was a red flag, kind of like they were wary for some reason. It's like they may have seen you as like this, you know, like this goddess woman person that was just kind of like, like a siren, kind of like sucking them in. And I don't mean that in a negative way, but like they were so attracted to you your connection with them especially physical was probably very magnetic and because of that they almost needed to cut that off because they couldn't continue to get sucked in because they didn't want to either feel this or they knew that they had another journey 
or another path that they needed to go on and this energy was sucking them in it was taking their time it was taking them off their path okay but now in the present what I'm getting is that this person as much as in the present they might want to come back together with you they are leery wary cautious and secretive meaning that they're not telling you they may be viewing you on social media they may be asking people about you they may be just kind of thinking about you again and trying to figure it out but they're certainly not going to be calling you on the phone there's something like that so but I'm also getting secrecy as in there may have been a part of them that they have like this secret passion for you that they can't explain and they don't know why they have it, but they just do. And that, again, might be how they're viewing this as in they, they have this like secret within themselves, the secret passion, the secret like connection with you. But they're not going to tell you. <laughs> That's just what I'm getting here. They might think that they're alone in that feeling, too, is also what I'm getting. And that might be why they're just very wary of even coming towards you and even trying to reconnect with you. We have receptivity. So this is saying allow yourself to receive and allow yourself to give. This person does want to come towards you and make an offering, but they're not sure that you're going to be receptive to this. So that's why they're cautious. That's why they're wary right now. And this is in the present moment, people. This is in the present moment. Some of these energies are from the past, but what I'm getting from this person is that that's how they're viewing you now. They may want to come towards you, but they're leery and they're cautious and they're, they're not rushing towards you, that's for sure but they're starting to see this connection or they felt it before and it's like being reawakened within them. This passion is being reawakened and reexamined. Okay. Very interesting. So this is how this, how you see this person for you, how you see this person for yourself, kind of like what they meant to you, what you felt towards them. These are the Wild Wisdom Fairy cards, and I forgot to say that was the Oracle of Mermaids, both by Lucy Cavendish. You see this person, this is saying the Gossamer Princess, communication, relationship work to be done. You see this person as they're not communicating with you. You want to communicate with them. You also see that there's a lot of relationship work that still needs to be done. This person needs to grow. You need to grow. You guys really need to work on this connection. Whatever it is, you look at this as something that needs to happen within this connection. Okay, There's something lacking. But you also see this person as very shimmery. This person could be physically beautiful you could just think that this person is just the most gorgeous person you've ever laid your eyes on okay there's just something about them that is so fucking glamorous to you they're so confident they have a lot of charisma this per person could be famous for some of you this person could just be in the public eye recognized for something some sort of special talent but whatever that is you are looking at them and you like what you see child of the moon <laughs> forgiveness and transcending the ego this person you have either already done this forgiveness or you have to do this this person hurt you is what I'm getting so for some of you you may have resonated with the message that you somehow step away, stepped away from this connection or you hurt them but I'm getting that this person hurt you in some way and so there is some sort of forgiveness that needs to be done. And then once we do this, we literally transcend the ego. We take all of that fear and all that darkness and we turn it into the light. And so we have child of the moon. And I believe what that's saying, it's very childlike to hold a grudge. It's very childlike not to grow and stay stuck. The moon is very dark. It's not light. And so we need to transcend. We need to not be the child of the moon anymore. We need to transcend. So if you've already done that, that's fantastic. But if you have not, this is just spiritual reminder of saying you need to do this. And we have story keeper. For some of you, you could be writing a story on this connection. Okay. You could be writing in a journal. There could be some sort of therapy for you when it comes to writing about your connection. You could be writing letters that you don't send to this person as well. But there is something about the, it's a story keeper tell your story write your wisdom 
I'm getting for most of you though that, that has something to do with you're literally writing a book and you are either inspired because of this connection or you're actually writing it on this connection. But that's how you view this person. You view this person as being a character or some sort of, you know, um, like a muse within your creation. That's amazing. Okay, so now let's go ahead and take a look at, let's go ahead and take a look at the current the current status of this connection. Where are the two of you at on this twin flame journey? Where are the two are you where are the two are you at on this twin flame journey? And I'm calling it a twin flame journey because there's just so many freaking cards that came up, but you know, if that doesn't apply to you, don't take that message. This one here is the Gaia Oracle by Tony Carmine Salerno. This is where you guys are at on this twin flame journey. Enchanted Forest. I love this card. It says mystery, magic, and excitement. Right now on this journey, you guys could be individually feeling this, meaning that you're in an enchanted forest, you're experiencing a lot of magic, a lot of success. Things feel very enchanted right now. You could also be feeling this excitement and this energy when it comes to your twin flame. And especially if this is at night or in your dreams, or it's just like, you know, you just keep it to yourself because the moon is about hidden energies. Um, but you're like intuitively, you just know something, you feel something. And because of this, like you're getting this excitement as a kid. There's just some kind of magical energy that is surrounding um, you and this person right now or that connects you. We have hidden path. Interesting. So this is talking about the marriage of spirit and matter, okay? the hidden path. So the marriage of spirit and matter, that to me is about combining the energies of matter, which would be 3D, and spirit, which would be 5D. This is about ascension. This is about the, about being, there's a hidden path within this connection right now. It's almost like there is this, like this, op like this doorway or portal right now to ascend in this connection. There's something that's happening. There's a major shift going on right now when it comes to this connection. And it's because somebody is in the ma mystery, magic, and excitement energy. They're really, really high when it comes to um, hopefully just, you know, spirit or whatever, <laughs> spiritual things. Um, but anyways, there is this hidden path that's opening up for us. And um, spirit's just telling us to recognize what that is, okay? Lost love. Okay, so yeah, this love was lost. You guys had your chance, and it doesn't mean it's never going to happen again because I actually see it happening again. Um, but this is a lost love. People are, they, they've lost this love. They feel the loss of this love. It is a bummer, okay? This is, remember, this is your connective energy. This is what connects the both of you. This is both people feeling this, either at this time or at some point in this connection. And so what it does is it triggers them to have to surrender, heal, and then release. So this is a trigger card is what I'm getting on this connection right now. You guys are both thinking about the love that you lost and you're surrendering and healing and releasing anything that may be holding you back from this connection. We have moonlight. There is something about nighttime. And there is something about the moon. The moon's come up three times here. Could be talking about a Cancer or a Pisces person um, for some of you. Doesn't have to be for everybody. It could be you that's the Pisces or, Pisces or Cancer. Um, but yeah, there's something about the moon. There's something about our intuition and our dreams. Moonlight says travel, romance, and potential. Okay, so I'm also getting with this Enchanted Forest and Moonlight card, which is travel, romance, and potential. This may also be an indication where you guys are both thinking about like just doing something just completely spontaneous and just literally getting away and just completely losing yourselves in this magical moment. It's kind of like maybe you guys have a lot of issues right now. Maybe there's a lot of things that you have to do, but like it still doesn't stop people from wanting to just so badly come towards this connection, even if it's just not ripe yet but they, they, they want to reconnect with this person so much. They're literally, they're literally thinking of just traveling to this person or creating some sort of romantic situation. I'm getting at the potential is there. Like people are thinking about the potential when it comes to this connection. It may also be that you do not live in the same state or in the same continent as this person. 
and you guys, somebody is potentially thinking about traveling to either see you or move towards you or you to them. There is some kind of thoughts going on that's coming through like this. Last card, yin and yang. Beautiful. This just tells me that both people are really doing the work right now on this connection. They are working within their divine masculine and feminine energies. They are looking to um, really balance themselves. So I'm getting a lot of balance and I'm getting a lot of healing right now for these two. It's really, really beautiful. So that's what's going on within the connection right now. Those are the energies, okay? So let's go ahead and see how we connect with our twin flame. And these are people that are in separation. So this is how we're connecting with our twin flame. We're connecting with our twin flame in this way. This is how they're feeling us, and this is how we're feeling them. This is how they're feeling you. Oh man, they're definitely feeling you in the root chakra area. So all I gotta say about this is that they're definitely feeling you in a very physical way, very passionate way, okay? I'm also getting too that what they're feeling is that somehow the two of you belong together, that they belong to you, you belong to them. They might also be feeling very jealous, especially if they know that you're with somebody else right now. So there's definitely that energy coming through. What else? More. Yeah. This person is really feeling you in the physical world. The present card came up earlier and I really did get the message for this person that they're feeling you in the here and now. And I'm actually getting this again. They're feeling you here and now. When they're home, when they're alone, they are feeling you. Um, I'm also getting here that some of them may even be preparing their home or preparing their life, their finances, their possessions. It's just some sort of material aspect in order to prepare for returning to you. They want to have all their ducks in a row. They want to feel like they have stability or something to offer you. And so they may just really be feeling that. I'm also getting for some of you too that they're really feeling like you're their home. They belong to you. So I, I got that beginning, belonging, and this is my home. We belong together. One more. Yep, what did I say? They are feeling you on a sexual level. This is root chakra and sacral chakra now, second chakra. So they are feeling this energy. They see you as being beautiful. They want to come together with you. They want to make love to you. Some of them just want to have, you know, just like that romp in the sack, just to, you know, that passion that you guys share, whatever it is, they want to come together with you in a very physical way. So yeah, they're feeling you. What I'm getting from this person is that they're feeling you on a level to where, and I'm just going to use this as a scenario, they're laying in bed. They're thinking of you. They can't stop thinking of you. And so they literally are having like these physical sensations. Some of them may be pleasurable and others may just feel like torment, as in they're physically like tormented, physically missing your presence. There could be some kind of physical pain that is associated with when they connect with you and this energy. So some of them may not choose to be in this energy all the time because this is pretty, this is a, this is pretty uh, significant. It's pretty, um, I can't think of the word I want to use, just major. I don't know. Interesting. How are you connecting with them? Hey, you're connecting with them as well in the physical. So you guys are very connected in a physical way. So, now, so for some of you, this could be that you guys are physically around each other in your space. You could be work, you work together. You may see each other you may have to just be around each other for some reason that could be the message for some of you but the the main message though for me what i get is that you guys are feeling each other and i'm getting here that for you watching this video it's like the more that you ground yourself and the more that you like feel good within your own energy i'm actually getting that you feel this person you feel this person more when you're feeling grounded, like when you're either physically doing things or you're just kind of like, you know, maybe you're um, gardening, you're within the earth, you have your feet in the sand or something, you're swimming, you're in the elements. There's something about the elements and really connecting with this person. Some of you could take a bath and, and that for some reason, you're able to psychically connect with this person through the water or something like that. I don't know why that came through. And you're also connecting with this person on this uh, solar plexus chakra here. So this is talking about um, fulfillment, responsibility, self-discipline, empowerment, and reliability. 
So what I'm getting here is that the more responsible that you become and the more that you grow your energy with this, like within your own um, purpose, actually, this is what I just got. The more that you work on your life purpose that for some reason is connected to this individual, the more that you use this energy to ground yourself and create things in the material world, the more it's like you're, you're in tune you're, you're like on the same frequency as this person. You guys are doing this together, if that makes sense. It's like both people are simultaneously doing something within the material world and they're growing and they're taking responsibility and they're becoming more responsible. They're growing is what I'm getting more than anything. They're grounding. Yeah, look at this. You guys both have two cards of physical. They had two cards. Now you have two cards in the root chakra. There's definitely this energy here of people are physically feeling each other. Like it could literally be that you are feeling this person as in like you just, you, you feel them, you smell them, you, you feel their caress at night. There's something like that. There's some kind of physical thing that may be transpiring or they affect you on such a physical level that like you literally can't catch your breath or you have heart palpitations. I mean, something like that is coming through. Okay. And I'm not seeing it's a bad thing. I'm just seeing that it could become uncomfortable for some of you hoping that that makes sense. So Let's move on now and let's go ahead and see what their message to you from their higher self is at this time. What are they what is their message to you from their higher self? What do they want you to know? This right here is the those were the uh, chakra insight cards that I just used. This one is the Whispers of Love by Angela Hartfield. Okay, so their message to you from their higher self, they want this new love with you. So, I mean, I can already see it with the other cards that came through. They want a chance. They want like a second chance or however many chances it's been. It's like they want another go around here. They want to have new love. They are open to this love now is what I'm getting from spirit, okay? So they're telling you that they want this new opportunity. They want this opportunity to be able to show you their love this new love they've been renewed is what i'm getting here because why they have they love who they are now i'm getting before this person did not love who they were they may have thought they did they may have thought they had it all together but maybe things have happened for them over however many you know however long it's been between the two of you they now truly know who they are it's like what i'm getting is that they've come full circle with finding themselves they know who they are now and because they love who they are they are able now to offer their heart to you and they weren't able to do that before but they're able to do that now treasure your loved ones i'm getting here that this person treasures you now okay this this came up as the present earlier this person sees you as a gift they see you as a treasure they are able to see you now as a treasure. I mean, look at this, these beautiful hands that are cupping that woman that's sitting there. They see you now as a treasure. They see you as somebody that they love, that they want. I mean, we have three cards that have the word love, 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 and loved. I mean, I'm getting here that their message to you also is that they love you, that they care for you. So that's really, really beautiful. I love that. They're also telling you, get back to what you love. Maybe all these cards have the word love on it, but it doesn't matter. I still thought that was a special message. So get back to what you love. This is about a path. This is about making sure that you are living your authentic life. Get back to what you love. This is also about taking control of your life, taking back control. So their higher self may, like what they're telling you here is that you need to take care of yourself. You need to get back to the things that you love. So maybe they know that you're in a situation that you are not happy in and they want you to get back to what you love, get back to yourself, reclaim your authenticity, reclaim your youth, whatever that is. That's for some of you. But what I'm also getting here is that they want to get back to the love. They want to get back to who they love and that is you. They want to come back to you. That's what I'm getting here. Last message. The heart of the matter. This card tells us that there's more that's going on than meets the eye. There was something else 
that was going on with their heart at the time that you two were together. There's something more. It's almost like there's something that they have to reveal or something that you did not know or not you didn't understand at the time. So there was more going on. It was more complicated than I wasn't I'm not ready, I don't want a commitment, I have something to do, whatever the situation is. There was it was way more complicated than that. And maybe they didn't even understand what that was. But maybe now, since they've gone on this journey and they've come full circle and they've come back to themselves, they finally got to the heart of the matter is what they're telling you. And the heart of the matter is that they obviously had shit that they needed to work out. But what I'm getting is that this person is now ready. This person is now ready to come back into your life. It's it's incredible. So now let's go ahead and get some messages of some specific angels that are with the two of you on this connection. Angelic beings that we brought in with this connection. Special angels that are with us for this connection. That one just wanted to come out, so I'm going to take it. Angel of pleasure. Take pleasure in all the things that you do. So again, I mean, this card is an indicator here that, you know, it is about having pleasure in this lifetime. It is about, you know, being your best self and living your life to the fullest. I'm getting here that the angel of pleasure was here, you know, is here not only now, but was to remind these people of their passions. Okay. So if they had other passions at the time that they came together, this angel of pleasure, it's like knew that they needed to go and follow some sort of path or dream. And I'm getting that that wasn't a bad thing because that's exactly what they needed to do in order to come full circle with what they truly, truly wanted. You know, in, in, from, from the very beginning, they just didn't know it yet. They just didn't know it yet. And we have goddess of psychic protection. So this is about our thoughts. This is about things that we feel like, you know, we believe something and it has the ability to affect us. That could be positive or negative. So this is a goddess of protection, protecting the mind, protecting the third eye, also protecting other energies that are coming into this connection. So there may be people that are on this path with these two people that are, you know, saying things to them that may be hurtful and harmful taking them away from their highest good and even some for some of you this connection and i'm getting that this goddess of psychic protection is with this this couple and it's not happening so if you got negatively triggered maybe by something or someone somebody said that you shared you shared your experience okay this is this is coming through you shared your experience with somebody okay about your twin flame connection they don't know what the fuck that is so of course they think you're crazy and you know they say a bunch of stuff that totally and completely obliterates any any thought that you had when it came to this connection. I mean, you are upside down, turned all around, and you're just like, oh my God, maybe I'm just crazy. Maybe I need some help. I'm getting that this goddess of psychic protection is with this, you know, these people because they're letting you know that you can trust your intuition, that you know what's right for you. You're being psychically protected in your mind. What you're thinking is protected. And it's also being an indicator of not sharing all of your thoughts and all of your, um, you know, just your intimate thoughts with this con are on this connection with other people. You need to be careful. You need to be selective on who you share your thoughts with. It's no different than a brilliant idea. You're not going to go off on the internet and tell everybody about your idea. Somebody may steal it. Somebody may shit all over it. Whatever it is, it's going to affect you in a negative way. So you have to remember that when it comes to this type of sacred connection. Not, a, not everybody is equipped to understand it. Okay? Goddess of nature. This is about creating in the material world goddess of nature whatever she reaps she will sow this is also about laws of karma okay what i'm getting here is that this goddess when i say i mean this is the angels gods and goddesses and so i asked you know like what spiritual beings are with us on this connection so we have follow your passions take pleasure in what it is that you do love what you do 
what I just got when I said that was that these people may be um, guided to be very creative in this lifetime. This may be creative individuals that create. They do things. They live their passions. They are just having a lot of joy when it comes to creating something, okay? And that might be why that angel is there. Um, and then, of course, the goddess of psychic protection. Now we have goddess of, of uh, nature. There are laws in nature, okay? What you put out, you will get back. What you reap, you shall sow. So there is this balancing of karma when it comes to this connection. Again, somebody may have done something. They acted without integrity. They lied, whatever it was. I'm getting that people have learned from their mistakes and this goddess is here to make sure that happens. They're, they're here to make sure that maybe whatever was done to someone that it was also done to them but maybe in the form of another experience or person and so they have learned something because of this they've come full circle because of this but i'm also getting to with that goddess of nature is that the person that got hurt maybe they could not understand certain things or certain ways of how this person was and through their own experiences they realized huh I, 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 I now understand what that must have been like. And so now I'm not judging this person so harshly. I can see how they could do that. So I'm just getting that there is this ability to really examine things and see the other side through experience and through falling down, making mistakes, but learning from those mistakes. Angel of Vision. Angel of Vision here is with us to tell us that someone is not revealing part of the story you have to trust your intuition with um, you have to trust your intuition over what others say what i am getting this this kind of ties into psychic protection because somebody may have said something to someone on this path whether it was a friend whether it was um, another partner whether it was a family member um, whether it was maybe a, a psychic okay on your journey that may have said something to you to completely take you off of it's not to completely take you off of a, of a journey or a path but did a number on you and so it, it confused you very much and so this angel of vision is with us to tell us that we can trust our intuition trust our intuition over what other people say that's what this angel is telling us okay but it's also telling us that somebody in this connection has not said something okay I got that earlier trust what you feel over what other people are saying to you now they may have not said something to you as in they did not share how they felt with you or they said some shit to you that was really hurtful but what spirits telling you is that this angel is with us to help us to see the fear that was going on with that person during the time that they said these things it's about projecting we project our fears sometimes we say nasty things sometimes we say hurtful things sometimes we say things that we don't even understand why we're saying them we're just projecting we're projecting because we're fearful we're projecting because we're uncomfortable we're, we're triggered in some way but we do this because it's the only way that we can take the focus off of our own healing. And this person may not have wanted to really look at themselves to see, you know, that maybe they had some issues too. And so they were projecting their crap onto you. That's just what I'm getting. Last one, <laughs> goddess of the shadows. You know, I did see uh, some sort of connection with the, these two about shadows. These people may have really um, been able to go deep and dark within each other, as in there was something that was just very, um, and when I say dark, I don't mean like negative. I mean shadows, as in we revealed parts of ourselves. We, we were able to expose parts of ourselves um, with this person and them to us. And so there is an amount of shadows. So we have goddess of the shadows is with this connection saying, what you perceive to be your dark side holds a hidden treasure. So there, the, I just picked up on the energy of projecting. This person may have projected their darkness onto you, their shadow onto you, because they were uncomfortable with it, okay? But what this is saying is what you perceive to be negative actually has a gift for you. 
So that's essentially what a twin flame connection sometimes can represent is somebody to mirror back to us what we need to change or what we need to fix or what we want to change. And this happens for a reason. We're meant to trigger each other so that way we can go into this period of healing and growth. So I'm, I'm, I'm getting that this, this has happened here in this connection. So those are the angels that we, we're bringing in for this connection here and, and what they're working on currently and did work on and are still working on. Okay, so let's go ahead and see in what ways did, what ways did uh, you trigger this person, okay? What ways did you trigger this person, positive or negative? In what ways did you trigger this person? And I'm actually going to go with these cards because I'm just guided to do this. So this is the Psychic Tarot and Oracle cards by John Holland. So we're going to see this person, how you triggered them. How you triggered them or how you currently trigger them. I mean, it could be both ways. How you trigger this person. Okay, so you trigger this person to be their better selves in the material world, to work harder. You, you trigger this person to want to gain more prosperity and, like I said, just to better themselves in the material world. So... If you guys came together and then you separated, I'm getting through the separation or whatever was triggered within them and made them want to do better. It made them want to, to chase a dream. There was something about your connection that made them want to do to better themselves in the material world. Yeah, look at this. Firm foundation, four of pentacles. This is about making money. This is about having a firm foundation. This is about um, having, having money and not wanting to let go of that money. This is about saving. So you really triggered this person in a very uh, financial way, as in um, some kind of stability or structure through finances. Interesting. You also awakened this person, and I don't get fully awakened, but you gave them some tidbit of a flash. It's like coming together with them. It's like it sparked something in their mind and they got a sliver of something. But I, I you know, and see, until I see other cards here, I'm not sure, but I'm just getting that it initially began, okay? That spark was there for them. They had that moment of awareness. It may not have lasted as in they, they did, they went Im immediately into the material world and started to work on things in the physical and this overrid this original like awareness of something yeah look at this five of swords energy now coming through this is conflict with others this is conflict and defeat what i am getting from this is that what you triggered in them was some sort of behavior where they defeated you that they did something to you that was really unfair so this is coming through again this person hurt you this is about forgiving this person, all those things. But what I'm getting here is like literally they may have taken that sword and cut you out of their life or hurt you in some way. Because the five of swords is sometimes a card of mind games, manipulation, or just something you can't win. Like you couldn't win with this person. No matter what you did, you could not win. You could not win with this person. You could have been the greatest person in the world. You could have given them all the love. You could have been as challenging as possible. What I'm getting is that you wouldn't have won with this person no matter what the fuck you did. So it just, it, you, you couldn't get anywhere with this person back then because they did, they just, they were in search of something else at that time. So they had to go their own way to figure it out. And the thing is, I'm also getting here, before I go into that card, I'm also getting here how you trigger them. This is like current energy. Right now, they may or they have had co conflict and defeat in their life because of something that maybe they did. And it was like just this perpetual behavior that just they just kept doing something, something over and over again. It was a real struggle for them. Um, and so you triggered them in that way. You triggered them to really have to think about their actions and really figure out why things happen the way that they happened. Um, or they might feel defeated as in maybe they realized at that time, like, you know, you weren't what they were looking for, but then maybe for them to just, again, this person that's come full circle, I, I am already feeling this. You've triggered them in such a way to where now they're like, they, they almost feel defeated now by their own actions back then. We have the three of cups, how you triggered them. I am definitely getting that. They felt that connection with you. Okay. They felt some sort of 
reunification, coming back together with somebody, a soul. They felt that. They were triggered by this too. You know, you felt something, but I'm also getting that this person felt something too. So how you triggered them back then, because I'm doing past and present now, how you triggered them back then is that they did feel this reconnect with you. They did feel this soul connection with you. They did have a good time with you. This was not all bad for this person. So I'm just getting that you had probably more good times with this person than bad, but it ended badly is what I'm getting. But the Three of Cups energy here, for the present, how you trigger them is they would like to come back in reunion with you. That's what I'm getting here. It is, for some of them, they may just want to be your friend. Like as in, they might just want you in their life regardless of what you're ready for. They may just want to be your friend. They may just want to come together with you and spend time with you. That's, that may just be what it is for them right now. They really, really want that. Okay, so this is how this person triggers you. Let's go into that. This is the Psychic Heart Tarot in Oracle now. How this person triggers you. <laughs> this person triggers you. It's a freaking dream. You are seriously, I saw this earlier with the shimmer card. You are sucked in, man. You're drawn to this person. They are the person of your freaking dreams. There's something about them that's so dreamy, you just can't get over it. It's like you you might see, you just might see them everywhere, like just in, in, in certain movie stars or in certain dreams that you have or just in certain people and situations. Like you're constantly dreaming about this person. Like you're you're awake, it's daytime, and you're still dreaming about this person. So this person also confuses you. This person causes you to have to make some sort of decision as well. So I'm getting that this person triggers you in that way. And I feel like that it is positive, especially if you've been procrastinating about making changes or doing things with your life. I'm getting that this person triggers you to make necessary changes and to stop procrastinating. Yeah, look at this. This person actually triggers you to want to take the lead, to want to be in the emperor's energy, to want to take some sort of control in your life, to really build something, be a king of your empire, something like that, okay? This person may also trigger you in a very masculine way. And what I mean by that is maybe this person triggered you, like maybe they weren't... Um, they were somewhat passive and so it created you to want to be very masculine towards them or take control in some way or even maybe to fight in some way they may have triggered you i'm getting very passionate energy because it's ruled by aries so it's a very passionate way that they did trigger you but i'm getting that this passion not only was you know like i i'm really into this person i'm really attracted to this person but they trigger you in a way to get your life on track to start living your life's purpose. It's beautiful. Look at that. Nine of pentacles. This person triggers you to be a better person. Nine of pentacles energy is you are feeling so on top of the world. You feel like you have accomplished your dreams and goals and you are feeling quite well on your own. Like you don't need anybody. This is a card of total independence. This is a card of recognition as well. This person and their energy, just knowing them, them touching your lives has actually helped you to be a better person. And if you're not feeling that yet, this is what is in store. Oh my God, this person is your dream come true. This is all you want. This is all you freaking dream about. There is something so dreamy about this connection. You're so plugged in. This person is your wish. This person, when they return, it's going to feel like a freaking dream come true. Like you may not even be able to believe it. You may not believe it now. You may be watching this reading and saying to yourself, there's no freaking way. But that is your energy towards this person. They trigger your dreams as well. They trigger your dreams. They're, they're coming in your dreams. Like, I mean, they're coming to you in your dreams. They may trigger your dreams as in the things that you always wanted to accomplish. Now you are living your dream. I'm getting this. You're living your dream. You're living your life's purpose. You're doing what you always wanted to do. And then we have the Hierophants. 
you're teaching. This is a spiritual teacher. Okay, so this is going to be a specific message for some of you that have been triggered by this twin flame connection to teach others about spirituality and spiritual matters. Okay, you could be a life path number five for some of you that could be significant. You could be a Taurus. Maybe your divine masculine is a Taurus if we're talking about your divine masculine. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's this energy here of people that like this is about growing. This is about taking some sort of control with the number four, which is the emperor, and literally turning this into a spiritual thing. It's like a logical, practical energy with the power to create something. And what you create is a spiritual teaching where you're teaching others. I mean, look at this. This person is teaching these people and they're learning from them. So this person has triggered you in a very significant, positive way. But at the same time, you could totally get lost with this person when it comes to daydreaming about them. And it may affect your decisions. You may be confused on what you should do or not do or whatever the situation. I also see daydreams as creativity. This, this could be very creative. This person inspires you to be very creative as well. And that storyteller came up before. You could be writing about this person. You could be writing fiction. You could be um, creating when it comes to this person. There's something about this. Wow. Okay. So now um, I know this is a super long reading, but I'm just feeling the need to keep moving forward. Why don't we go ahead now um, and we'll go ahead and end the reading. We'll go into some energies of the future. Okay. What are some energies of the future? This is the Archangel Power Tarot cards. So this is the energies of the future when it comes to the connection. Okay, so we have the seven of Michael, the eight of Gabriel, and justice. I'm going to see what is this person's um, energy towards you specifically in the future. And your energy towards them. Okay. So we have the seven of Michael, seven of swords energy. It says there's a better course of action available to you. Working alone may not be the best answer. Review all of the details. So I do take into consideration when using these types of cards. I do take some of the traditional meaning of the seven of swords when I see it. But I also take into consideration what the card says. So when we're talking about the future energies of this connection, what this is saying is that there is a better course of action. Working alone will not get you to your goal. Do you see this person? They are standing there and Archangel Michael is right there trying to help them and aid them and assist them or assist them to the next step. So what I'm getting here is that people are recognizing that being alone and being on their own trying to figure this out is actually not the best course of action. They need to combine, they need to, um, you know, combine their energies or as, ask for support or ask for guidance when it comes to their next step on this journey. So that's just what I'm getting from this. Okay. Now the seven of swords can really mean that there's still this energy that's lingering or lingering around when it comes to past pain, because we saw past pain in the form of seven of swords in the past for this connection. We did see it in the contract. So that's just what I'm getting is that somebody may still feel either unforgiveness or they feel like the person that they hurt may not want to hear from them because the next card after this is the eight of wands, which is a card of communication, coming towards someone, making some sort of um, effort to come towards someone. It's a great deal of activity, sudden and immediate results, important communication. So future energies means that people are really trying to figure out maybe how to communicate with this individual. So what I'm getting here is that somebody or one of them is asking the divine for guidance on this, trying to figure out 
how to do this. Maybe they implement a friend's help or there is something that a friend is doing on their behalf. I don't know what that means for some of you, but there could be the assistance of other people or the divine that is going to help aid this communication and new activity that is coming in the future for this connection. And what I'm getting here is that the scales will be balanced once again. This says fight for justice and equality. Rulings made in your favor. Don't give up. That's very significant. So I'm seeing the progression, seven, eight, and eight. So this is really telling us here that somebody is struggling on how to make this happen. But this justice card is telling us not to give up. Things will be go favorable, okay? But this person's energy towards you specifically, they are frightened. They are afraid. This actually came up in the contract, the nine of swords energy. This is the nine of Michael, so I'm going to read it. Your worry is unnecessary. See, this person's worry is unnecessary. They don't know that everything's going to be okay. They don't know. That's why they probably have to go into this assistance right here. They have to go within to figure out what to do. Be guided. It says, focus your thoughts on the outcome that you desire. You don't want to focus your energies on fear. You want to focus on what it is that you desire. It says release feelings of regret, guilt, or worry to your angels. This person I've seen over and over again in this reading feels guilt and shame. They do. And the thing is, it's really, it's really hindering them coming towards you. So this is about giving your worry to the angels. And I'm seeing that this is what this person is going to do in the future. So that's really, really positive. Seven, eight, nine. Do you see the progression? Look at that. Seven, eight, nine. So the thing is, this is you. <laughs> You're the Knight of Raphael. You're the Knight of Cups. Totally welcoming this. Wanting this. You may even come towards them with a romantic gesture. You may speak some sort of romantic thing that helps to draw them in, to help them realize or understand that you still care for them, that you still want them, that you want them to come towards you, that you see them as the Knight of Cups energy. You know? So, very, very interesting. So, I know I said that was the last of the messages, but we are going to get some messages from the universe in regards to this connection and just what they have to say. So this is Art Through the Starstream Oracle. Last bit of messages from the universe for the people watching this video connecting with the messages that have come through here today on their twin flame connection or just their divine connection. That one just popped up. Embrace enlightenment. So this is literally about, you know, embracing concepts, embracing enlightenment, anything. It's about not being, uh, it's about thinking outside of the box. It's about embracing anything that's coming to you. It's literally coming to you from a, like a different realm, an angelic realm, a universal realm, something that is not of the 3D world. So you're meant to embrace this enlightenment. I'm also getting to that the person that you that is so afraid right now, the person that's having such a hard time right now is also going to embrace this enlightenment that's going to be offered to them. And we did see it earlier with, you know, the assistance with angels. Yeah, this is going to create pathways. Pathways are going to be created is what I'm getting here. Once we embrace embrace this more enlightened thinking, we're going to actually create pathways for ourselves. We're going to create new pathways. Yeah, your goal is within reach is what Spirit's saying. This can happen. This can totally happen, but you just have to believe that it's going to happen. Find the middle ground and compromise. Right now, you may be really feeling like, oh, you know, I've been, this is, this has been so long. Are you freaking kidding me? How much longer is this going to be? I can't, I just, I don't know what I'm going to do. What I'm getting is that you have to find the middle ground right now and you have to compromise. This is also about finding the middle ground and compromising with this individual once they return. Okay, so this is about, yeah, you may have a lot of things to say. You may have a lot of things that you want to resolve, but you got to find the middle ground and you've got to, you got to come together with this person. That's probably why the justice card was there. We are going to have the opportunity to weigh the scales, but we also have to compromise. We also have to see where we may have gone wrong or what our part in things were. Okay, it wasn't just one-sided. There's always two sides to a story. 
and we have start anew begin again this is an energy here that's saying that we will have this opportunity to start anew and begin again when it comes to this connection we are going to have a second chance with this person wow and i'm just going to do one more <laughs> one more these are the what are these guardian angel tarot cards by doreen virtue and I think Bradley Valentine. I just want to get an ending message that has written words on it. What is our final angel message when it comes to this connection? This is the one that popped out chariot love it be open to success look at all the wonderful things that you can do when you listen to your divine guidance remember somebody has to listen to the divine in order to move forward it says you've balanced so many different priorities and have come out the winner there will be a lot of recognition and praise headed your way but don't be shy allow others to shower you with the gratitude that you deserve this is about confidence. This is the chariot, by the way. It's about confidence moving forward. This is about realizing that, you know, you are going to be recognized for how hard that you've worked. So it's about don't be shy, as in, you know, there is somebody that's being very reluctant right now when it comes to this connection. Don't be shy. Realize that, you know, this is a go. This is a go. So anyways, I know that was a long one, you guys. I hope you hung in there. I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. All right, bye-bye.